Welcome back to the Sports Source. The segment of our program is brought to you by my friends at Southeast Termite and Pest Control. And when it's 70 degrees in November, as it's been, uh, that means there are still bugs out there looking to get into your home. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control right now, and you can still get their Fall Invaders treatment. Now, I do this every year. I used to, before I got with these guys, I didn't do it, and I would wind up, you'd see a ladybug or a stink bug in the fall, and then come January, February, in the spring when they've laid their eggs, you have five million ladybugs in your house. That no longer happens because Southeast Termite and Pest Control comes out and gives me their fall invaders treatment. Box elder bugs, stink bugs, ladybugs, they block them all. Give them a shout or check them out online. SoutheastTermite.com, great locally owned, family owned business. Okay, let's talk about some of the biggest problems uh, with this Tennessee football team. I've documented a few here. You guys can agree or disagree, we'll put it up. Uh, we'll see him, and you can give me a yay, nay, take it in a different direction. If I exaggerated something, whatever we get here. Let's look at them. Number one, kind of obvious, quarterback play. Tennessee ranks 13th in the SEC. There are only 14 teams in the SEC. 13th in passing yards per game. But the real underline to this, <laughs> on the season, Tennessee has thrown for 1,048 yards. That's Garantano, that's Maurer, that's all of them. 1,048 yards and six touchdown passes through six games. Yesterday, two guys that this staff said they didn't want threw for 870 yards and eight TDs combined. That's Penix at Indiana and Hallett, North Carolina. That, that's your point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's about as ugly. We know that the quarterback position is a problem, but you had apparently some fixes that could have looked better, and you didn't pursue them. Yeah, and it's not even just the lack of production. I mean, the turnovers, not every turnover has been the quarterback's fault, but a lot of them have been. Yeah. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. you know, I think you could you could hang the Kentucky game solely on those. I don't know that Tennessee beats Georgia, but they probably hang without those turnovers. Yeah. So it, it's, it's everything. It's the production. It's the turnovers. It's the lack of confidence that I think permeates the entire team. Right. They know, you know, when the defense gives up a touchdown, I don't think they feel very confident that, hey, they're going to get that back for us. It's like, no, if you give up a touchdown – uh, well, better luck next week. It's, it's, it's one of those deals. It's, it's the confidence, you know, and the whole offense and the quarterback, uh, it bleeds the rest of the roster. Well, you said it before. you got an offensive coordinator who clearly is calling plays to negate, uh, to minimize. We said it before the season. That's what the game plan should be because it is what it is. You've got to protect it. Right, and that's the, uh, the other unfortunate thing. You haven't seen any improvement. Right, not an improvement from the first string guy, but you hadn't seen improvement when they bring in a second string guy, right? There's no improvement that you can say, wow, that guy got better from last year to this year. And, and, and you're just looking at it. And your biggest reason that the quarterback you start starts is because he knows the playbook and knows the calls to put him in. And that's like, well, that's not a talent thing, right? That's a, something you should be able to teach a bunch of guys on a team how to do. So I look at it that way. Is it's, it's not only disappointing production, but it's also disappointing in that you weren't able to improve this area one iota, and that's where you, that's where you fall back on. A lot of folks expected progression from Jared Garantano mm -hmm. this year, and instead, much like the team itself, you've seen a regression. He's, he's worse than he was last year in terms of numbers. Let me quickly run through this. Jimmy, I'll get you to comment on a couple of these as well. Uh, pass defense is up next. UT ranks 12th in the conference. You know, and this is bad when Jeremy Pruitt and Derek Ansley are both defensive back gurus, but this group 12th in the league in passing yards allowed per game, and they only have two interceptions through six games. One of those was a linebacker. In, in general, Tennessee only has seven turnovers this year, so that, that's mm -hmm. hurt them as well, but only two interceptions, and their linebackers have just been poor in coverage all year. Uh, the, I think Toa Toa last week, four targets, four more completions. Uh, they just don't have anything in terms of pass defense. It doesn't look like it's getting better week to week. And John, I was wrong about that because I thought that with uh, Alante Taylor and Bryce Thompson, yeah. they would be much improved. Now, they have not always been healthy and, and playing together. I get that. And then Sean Schamberger at the nickel position, I thought he would be fine. And he's been, I don't know if he's in the doghouse. He doesn't even make the, a recent trip uh, for Tennessee. And, and I'll say this, too. They probably miss Nigel Warrior more than they thought. Uh, Nigel Warrior, the last eight or so games of last year, played at an all-SEC level, so I think his absence has hurt them some. But I was looking for Jalen McCullough and some of these other defensive backs to uh, perform at a better rate than they have. I don't understand why they haven't. It looks like there have been a lot of busts back there. I know that uh, COVID impacted the secondary as far as the number of people that missed practice, but still, 
You haven't had a COVID issue in what, six or seven weeks. I would think they would have cleaned that up. I'm surprised at this. All right. It's a lot of miscommunication because it's guys mm -hmm. right before the snap going, you know, and yeah. still talking. And that means we don't know what we're doing. And so that's an issue too. All right, let's get through. I'm going to race through these next uh, few. You guys stop me if you disagree or uh, just sing hallelujah if you agree. Uh, third downs, this is kind of obvious. It's offense and defense. On offense, you are 14th in the league. You're only converting 27% of your third downs. That's horrific. Even worse, though, on defense, you're 12th in the SEC. But you're giving up about – it's a coin flip on third down. That is terrible. That is absolutely a horrible number. Now, you look on the offensive side, one reason you got third down issues – Look at your first downs. UT ranks 11th in the SEC with just 3.9 yards per attempt on first down rushes. So your big bad offensive line isn't getting it done on first down. So you're, you're not on schedule. And one of the reasons they might not be getting it done on first down with the runs, because everybody knows they're going to run. You are 13th in the SEC in terms of first down pass attempts, only 58 through six games. So you're not even throwing on first down 10 times a game. All right, uh, up next, the last one here, explosive plays. Tennessee ranks 12th in the SEC in plays of 10 or more yards. You only have one play all year of 40 or more yards. And that, people will chalk that up to your offensive coordinator. That's fine. You can chalk that up to your offensive line. Okay. We expected more of Gray and Chandler. You know, Velas Jones was expected to be a real playmaker. Mm -hmm. You have not found someone like Jawan Jennings who will break tackles, who will create his own space, who will carry a guy on his back for 15 extra yards. You simply haven't had your playmakers that we expected to be playmakers play like playmakers. Any of those three you guys have any problems with, or is there anything else you would add to this list in terms of here's a definite issue? Pass rush, consistency there. Um, you haven't seen that. Uh, you, you've had sacks here and there. The end of the game gets to Arkansas, but that kind of inflated their numbers. They're midway in the SEC thanks to that fourth quarter. Right, but even overall quarterback pressures, I would say you're very light on. Like, you're, you're not getting there. The quarterback has a very clean pocket most of the time. So I just think that's lacking as well. Okay. Yeah, nothing really specific. I think that sums it up. It's just, you just, you watch these games, you watch these teams, just everything looks difficult. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. everything looks so hard. They're playing offense a lot of times, and you're like, well, you know, to be fair, no one's ever run plays on offense in the history of football before, and it looks like that sometimes. And then defensively, it looks like you get guys open up all open all over the field. It's 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 hard to watch. It's just it's I, I you know, a team with this much talent, you know, is 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 underachieving right now. Jimmy, offensively, if you have a Josh Dobbs, mm -hmm. it it can mask a lot of these other yeah. issues. Yeah, if did. you have an Alvin Kamara, if you mm -hmm. have that kind of a running back, it can mask a lot of the. You don't have it. I like Eric Gray. I don't think he's out in Camara, but I like right. him. I think he's a good running back. You don't have a quarterback that can mask that. And so I do think that's a concern. And that's why I think the sometimes Dobbs and Camara and Hurd and those guys made the offensive line look better than it was. I'm going to add one more thing to what you said, and I'll try to be brief with this. Player development. Most of the player development that I've seen over the last three years are with Butch Jones players. I haven't seen that much with the players that Pruitt has, has recruited and signed. And I think that's another issue. Uh, David, you did an uh, exit interview for The Athletic uh, this past week with Niles Gaddy, uh, kid that most people didn't know, a uh, walk on, he's going to Jackson State. But he had an interesting comment about, that you asked him the difference between last year and this year and the turnaround. He said the leadership we had from those seniors, they were all the Butch Jones guys. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of being able to rely on those veterans, you're not getting that kind of leadership this year either. Yeah, I think there's something to that. I think uh, you have a lot of young guys, you know, that are being put in this position for the first time versus a guy like Nigel Warrior or Jawan Jennings who had kind of been carrying that mantle for two or three years. I mean, last year, what well, was probably their second or third year being the biggest voice in the locker room, and Tennessee didn't really have that this year. So, you know, what's the value in that? It's really intangible. It's hard to know. Mm -hmm. um, but when you see everything else going wrong and you can't really explain it in terms of talent or losses or, or injuries or all these kind of things, it, you have to kind of look at the intangible things, and it definitely makes you wonder. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about quick fixes. Which of these issues can be fixed? What are we doing? I'm going to make this, this crew the head coach. What are we doing in this open week? What changes? Whether that's going to youth movement, change of quarterback, uh, learning how to stop the slant. We'll discuss that next. Come on back to the sports world.